called Sheldon Harrison. There never been no comparison. You're live on the show. Sit back and have a listen. All right, all right. LDWMMAC. This is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Well, guys, here it is. Here it is right in front of your face. It is the Coach's Bellator MMA Women's Flyweight Grand Prix Tournament Bracket System. That's right. The coach came up with this all on his own. Now, Scott Coker, you can thank the coach later for this. You can thank me later, Scott. Uh, you can thank me by coming on the coach's show and giving the coach an interview, Scott. And that's just how it is. But, uh, you know, the old system that they used, I, I didn't like it too much because, you know, the champion actually, you know, had to fight in the tournament, which I thought was kind of counterproductive. Um, I believe that this needs to be a tournament to determine who gets the right to fight for the belt. Because then you're going to have a lot of people. You know, they're going to go in there and they're going to give performances and matches of a lifetime okay and, and it's it's going the performances are going to be stellar if you do it the way that i'm suggesting okay um let me go ahead and explain how i have this all set up okay just like in a fight there's a red corner and there's a blue corner okay well i got the fighters in each corner i got them ranked from one through seven i got them ranked one through seven and the rankings they're based on strength of resume Okay, they're based on their Bellator record and overall skill set. Okay, so a person may not have a good strength of resume, but they may have a great overall skill set. So a lot of things in this tournament system that I created, it balances each other out. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the fighters, okay, and why they're ranked the way they're ranked. Let's go to the red corner first, okay. My number one contender, okay, my number one seed on the red side is Liz Carmouche, okay. Um, out of all these ladies on, on in the red corner, Liz Carmouche has probably the greater body of work, the greater strength of resume. You know, Liz has been in there with the likes of, you know, Shevchenko, Chikugin, and the list goes on and on and on, okay? Uh, Liz Carmouche has had some fights. She's been in wars, okay? Uh, there's nobody else on his left side that's more battle-tested than Liz Carmouche. Okay, my number two seed in the red corner is Carrie Melendez. Uh, Carrie Melendez, you know, her overall skill set is great. She's 4-0 in Bellator. Now, her strength of resume isn't as strong as some of the people that you see here. It's not as strong. But, you know, Carrie Melendez, her overall skill set is leading, is leading me to believe that, you know, she's going to make a run at this. And Carrie Melendez could be, okay, she could be the winner for the red side. She could be the ultimate winner and fighting for the right to be the number one contender. Um... My number three seed is Alara Joani. Uh, Alara Joani, she's a newcomer. So guys, y'all know I'm I'm putting you know what I know about MMA on the line because I got so many of these Bellator newcomers. They're high seeds. Alara Joani, you know she's the one that beat the hell out of Beck Rawlings. Um, she's very physically strong, and I said that she's probably you know probably one of the strongest flyweights in Bellator right now. Alara Joani, you know she's tough and as rough as they come. And Alara Joani, man, she got a chin and she's very durable. Um, her style is going to present problems for anybody in this tournament that got to face her, okay? So my number three seed is Alara Joani. My number four seed is Denise, Di Miss, De Miss, Di Denise Miss Dynamite Kills. Okay, that's my number four seed. Denise probably has more skill, okay? She's more skillful than most of the people on the red side. Uh, Denise is probably the best striker, okay? Probably the best striker in the tournament, hands down. I don't think anybody can stand with Denise Kilholz and win. Um, Denise, uh, she's got a 4-1 record in Bellator, 4-2 overall. Um, her only loss in Bellator came at the hands of Vader Arteaga. Um, and Vader Arteaga, you know, Denise was winning the fight, and she got caught in a guillotine. She was, you know, trying to put pressure on Vader, and, you know, it didn't work out. Since then, Denise has gone on a two-fight win streak. And her latest, uh, you guys know she, she beat up a, a Sangre single, the girl that kept talking about kickboxing, kickboxing, no MMA kickboxing. You know, she beat her and tapped her out. So I got Denise Kilhos as my number four seed over here. My number five seed is Veda Artiaga. Okay, I probably would have had her at number four. But, you know, Veda Artiaga, she's just, she's been on a losing streak of late. And the beating that she took at the hands of um, Alejandra Laura, you know, it just, I don't know, like, what version of Veda Arteaga we're going to get. 
you know I don't know you may get the, the version of Vader Arteaga that may go in and just you know do damage or you may get the Vader Arteaga who just completely overwhelm you just don't know but Vader Arteaga is my number five seed okay she's as rough and as tough and as durable as, as they come uh, Veda took some heavy shots from Alejandro Laura. She took some of Alejandro Laura's best shots, and Veda Arteaga is still coming forward. She's the type of fighter that, no matter what you do to her, she's going to continue to fight you. She's not going to stop. Veda is, I put those people, people like Veda, these are people that you have to kill in order for them to stop, okay? My number five seed, Veda Arteaga. My number six seed is the veteran, Colleen Snyder. Um, Colleen would have been a higher seed, but you know Colleen is 37. Okay, uh, she's 11 and 8 overall. Uh, she's 1 and 1 in Bellator. She's been in there. She's had some really, really rough fights, and she's another pioneer. Um, she's a six seed because you know she came off a knee injury, and I don't know if that knee would be completely healed by the time this tournament gets around. You know, I really do believe that Colleen Snyder still has it. I believe she still got it. And I think that if she's 100% healthy, when this thing rolls around, Colleen Snyder can give people a lot of problems. And finally, my number seven seed is uh, Heather the Heat Hardy. Uh, Heather Hardy, her stand-up is very, very good. And you can tell that I got her versus Killholz because that's going to be a striking masterpiece. Um, and it would seem like, you know, Killholz gets a, an easy round, gets an easy person in the beginning. But see, Killholz she's going to have a tough road to the belt because she's got to go in if she even if she wins she's got to face Vader Arteaga who uh, submitted her or she got to face Alara Joani who is just very brutal and when I think when I see Alara uh, Joani I just think of pure violence so Denise Kilholz her road to the you know her world to the number one contendership it, it's, it's hard now if you notice too the number one seed Liz Carmouche has a bye and I set that up where every number one seed has a buy. And, you know, basically that's the perks you get for being a number one seed. And see, it works out. You can put more people in the tournament and, you know, you're going to see more fights, okay? Um, now, who do I think will win this tournament? Or who do I think could win this side of the bracket? It, it's going to be between, in, in my opinion, okay? It's between three people, okay? It's going to be between Liz Carmouche. Carrie Melendez, Alara Joani, and Denise Kills. Oh, that's four. Okay, one of those four, I think, in my opinion, they're going to win, okay? I think Liz Carmouche, she's more skillful than everybody, and probably Liz Carmouche probably is going to have the higher advantage to win. Okay, I think she is. Um, if she can get past Melendez, yeah, Liz Carmouche will be able to, you know, be the number one contender. Now, let's talk about the blue corner. Okay, let's talk about my seeds from the blue corner. Here we go. Okay, my number one seed from the blue corner, and probably everybody would agree with this, is Juliana Velasquez. Juliana Velasquez has been wreaking hell on every single person in the women's flyweight division in Bellator. Juliana Velasquez is probably the sole threat. She's the sole threat to Alima Le McFarlane. And honestly, in my personal opinion, I think she can beat Alima Le. Uh, she's very strong, she's very durable, and she's powerful as hell, man. This girl is hard to take down, she's hard to wear down. It's almost like Juliana Velasquez is a tank. And whoever got to face her, I just it's not going to be an easy matchup. It's not. And, and I'm going to put it out here now. I think Juliana Velasquez would probably be in the final round to be the number one contender. I think she's going to make it all the way to the end, in my personal opinion. My, my number two seed is Alejandro Laura, okay? Uh, Alejandro Laura gave Juliana Velasquez, gave her fits. And Juliana Velasquez had a tough time with Laura. Alejandro Laura, to me, okay, she's that wild card. She's tough as nails. And with her style, is you know, her style is very unorthodox. You know, and Alejandro Laura takes a lot of angles. And also, her jiu-jitsu is very, very good. Uh, El uh, Alejandro Laura is deceptively, she's very deceptively fast and athletic, man. So, you know, Alejandro Laura is my number two seed. My number three seed is the veteran, Valerie Letourneau, okay? Valerie Letourneau, she lost the title fight to Alima Le McFarlane. So, um, she didn't lose a whole lot of stock in my book. But Valerie Letourneau, she's still pretty much, you know, 
she fights well. She fights well. She's 10 and 7. She's been in a lot of wars, but she fights very, very well. So Valerie Letourneau is my number three seed. My number four seed is Kate Jackson. Even though Kate Jackson, she took a vicious beating at the hand of Alima Lehman McFarlane. I'm talking about she got beat viciously. There's still something about Kate Jackson that I believe that Kate can fight. I just don't know what happened to Kate when she fought for the title. I don't know if Kate's nerves kicked in. I don't know. But I've seen Kate Jackson fight in other fights. And Kate Jackson put up a much better performance against other opponents. And she's been in there with some tough opponents. You know, she's been in there with some skilled and tough opponents. It's just, guys, Alima Lane McFarlane is a beast. She really is. And she is really that good. Um, my number five seed is Christina Williams. Christina Williams, uh, her kicking game. Okay, she's probably got the best kicking game outside of uh, Valerie Lareda. Uh Christina Williams, she's very stationary. She's extremely stationary. She's slow. But Christina Williams, her timing is like perfect. Okay, her technique and the way she executes her strikes is perfect. Um, Christina Williams is very tough. And she's one of those people that you're going to have to beat and beat and beat this girl because she's durable and there's no quit in Christina Williams. My number six seed is the prospect, the 21-year-old Valerie Lareda. Uh, Valerie Lareda, her Taekwondo, she's like a like a high-level degree black belt in Taekwondo. Her stand-up is great. And if you notice, I have her paired up against Cobra Kai Bennett. And that's going to be a striking bloodbath. It's going to be a striking bloodbath. Um, Valerie Lareda, you know, her ground game is lacking. She's still a prospect. And that's why she's a number six seed. My number seven seed is Cobra Kai Bennett. And I know you guys are looking at the record. But, you know, I always tell you guys in women's MMA, don't let the record fool you, okay? Cobra Kai Bennett, she actually got some hands. Um, Cobra Kai Bennett, and she can crack too. And it only takes one, you know, she's got that one quitter hitter in her hands. And if Cobra Kai Bennett lands that right hand, and if she lands it hard enough, it could be good night, okay? Fight over. Um... This is, an this is a very interesting matchup between her and Valerie Lareda because it's going to see, you know, will the, ta will the Taekwondo background of Valerie Lareda beat the heavy-handed power-based striking of Cobra Kai Bennett? I mean, which one? I want to see Cobra Kai in this tournament because, number one, she's 31. Um, and I just think that she deserves an opportunity. And I think that she would get in this tournament and do well. To be honest... I don't know who would win the fight. Okay, this is a 50-50 fight. Don't let Cobra Kai's record fool you. Don't let that fool you. This girl can fight. Okay, just like I tell y'all, don't let Janae Hollow Point Hardy record, don't let that fool you because Janae is good. Cobra Kai is a good fighter. Okay, I want to see this. This is my tournament breakdown, okay? Um, you guys, you can tell me what you think, but I think that this format where the number one seed, they get, they get a bye and then everybody else they fight and then the number one seeds get to fight the winner you know of the first round guys this tournament would go together smoothly and then and only then the person who wins this entire tournament they get a crack at the title now what now what would have to happen is that all of these seeds they would have to fight okay they have to fight all these fights in one night you know just like they did in Vict Invicta in the Phoenix tournament series they fight all these fights now my format is different from Invicta because I want these girls to fight to get to the number one contendership, okay? Then I want the number one contenders on each side to fight each other to determine who is the main number one contender. And then on another date, okay, on another date, give the fighter who won this entire tournament, give them a uh, an eight-week camp, an eight- to ten-week training camp. Because a tournament like this is very brutal. Uh, it's a lot of wear and tear on the body. And the person who would win this tournament they would need that 10 weeks to rest and train. They would need it, okay? They need it. But that's my format, and this is how I think it needs to go. Um, you guys tell me what you think, okay? And I'll be keeping an eye on this, and hopefully, you know, Scott Coker will get wind of this, and, you know, maybe he followed this. You know, maybe, you know, they might change around who the seeds are and whatever, but, you know, I think my seeds are pretty legit because, you know, I've been looking at fights, guys. I've been looking at fights and fights of each of these women. Try watching 14, three fights of 14 different people. Man, it'll drive your head crazy, but I've been doing that most of the day. 
Alright guys, thank you. This is your boy Coach Sheldon Hanson. I'm done. What are you waiting on? Subscribe to the best women's MMA platform on YouTube.